Okay, hello everyone. KD5FX here. It is the grand unboxing of the Flex Radio 8600. Been waiting on this since May of this year when I ordered it. 15 minutes after the email arrived. I think it was like 8.15 in the morning, Oklahoma time. And I uh, got the email that it was coming Friday. With a tracking number and been uh, anxiously waiting for the FedEx man to arrive watching the front yard camera and he just showed up and left about five minutes ago so there's my invoice let's put it over here the rest of stuff Okay, double boxed it looks like, that's good. <clears throat> All right. Whew. Okay, we got the quick start guide. Just what we need. Technical support number, helpdesk.flexradio.com. Hope we don't have to contact them today. And, oh, hey, that's not really a button. It's a little cardboard thing. I don't know what that is. There's a sticker. Oh, oh, I guess this is a, this is a coaster. That's what it is. Cool. There's a box, oh, with the hand mic. Oh, I didn't know it came with a hand mic. I didn't realize that. Okay, cool. Got a little Yezu looking mic. Thank you. Oh, I thought it said Yezu on the front, but it doesn't. I have a Flex 6300, so this is not my first Flex, and I bought the 6300 10 years ago. Okay. There she is. Doesn't look too fancy on the front, does it? And there's the back. What do you know? It's just like the documentation you see online. Let's set it over here for now. What else have we got in here? Power cord. Okay, good. And... Oh, this is the uh, GPS antenna. That would be nice. I'm looking forward to trying it out on uh, frequency measurement tests coming up next month. And a Ethernet cable. And that's all that's in the box. So let's set that over here out of the way. Off the flex so you can see it a little better. All right, there's the front of it. One button, ah. there's the back. Two antennas, power cable, powered speaker, of course, just like the old one, balanced in. Accessory, not sure what that's all about. GPS antenna and all the RCA jacks. Ethernet, USB. Very good. Matches up real good with the old Heathkit SB101, doesn't it? What do you think? Yeah. And the uh, Collins. KWM2A, but that's not its final resting place. I've got a, I've got another spot for it here, so I'm going to go put it there. More to come. Okay, it's uh, about an hour later. Had a little trouble getting the download to work properly. I always seem to have a hard time finding the exact link on the Flex Radio website that is the download. I think it's a pop-up, and 
and my software keeps blocking the pop-up, but I finally got it. So I've got both radios going. Left side is the 8600, which is right there. Right side is the 6300, which is right there. So that's 6300 software. So they're both going and I can flip the antenna switch between the two. I don't have them exactly on the same frequencies, but flip the signals back and forth. My next step is I'm going to build a, a T, coax T, so I can listen to both receivers at the same time and compare. First impressions on the new, what is this, 3.18 software, whatever, the 3.8.19, that's it. Down there, where is it? Yeah, 3.8.19. It's got the squelch settings, something called DIV, which I guess is diversity. We have to read up on that. That's new. Uh, what else? I guess that's about... Well, the attenuators are different. Attenuation for the band. Uh, what do they call it? Antenna. You click on that. You've got several settings now to play with. I'll have to try out the, um, the DSP to see if it works better than on the old software. My old... Uh, um, 6300 is on version 2.12.1, which I think is the latest out there for version 12. I never upgraded it to version 3. So more later when I have some more uh, time on the air. Okay, an update. I've been playing with it all afternoon. I've got the old 6300 here. The new 8600 on this screen. Here's the two radios. The 8600s on top and the 6300s right down here in the middle. I've got the headset plugged in to both radios, left and right, so I can compare the receivers, left and right, and then on the actual receive antennas, I'm split so they are both listening to the same thing. Currently on the hex beam on 10 meters, pointed at Japan, and I wrote myself a note so I don't blow up a receiver. <laughs> and uh, so far, I'm, it's very close on performance. I can't tell much difference. the uh, The new 8600 has more adjustability and some and some new features. I kind of wrote a few notes here this afternoon as I played through with it. Uh, the new Flex has more gain on the preamp and, and more adjustability on the old 6300. It's either on or off, and you've got several settings on the 8600. The 8600 has squelch, which is something I've always wanted. The diversity receive, which I haven't had a chance to play with yet. Uh, of course, there's twice as many pan adapters because it has... Uh, more processors. It has the GPS receiver uh, built in, so it should be more accurate. That's uh, something I'd like to do is the uh, frequency measurement tests. And so um, I'll be playing around with that a lot in the next few days trying to figure out how accurate it really is. And I noticed on the network settings that or the network uh, display that it has about one tenth the lat latency as the network as the other network, or on the network, as the other radio. So I thought that was interesting. And uh, that's it for this current update. More later as I find out new goodies. Okay, I've had the uh, radio for two full days now. Done a lot of uh, receiving, some transmitting, playing around with all the new features. Checking it out. Here I am on 10 meters. There's the new radio up there. I've now got it hooked up to the amp. Got a KPA 500 and the KAT 500 tuner. So that's all up and running. Working good. So kind of have come to some conclusions of, uh, of the radio and we'll go over those pretty quick, hopefully. Um, 
So it does have a lot of new features over my old 6300, but is it a better receiver? No, I don't think so. It's about the same. I can't tell any difference. But then I really haven't, you know, maybe maybe in the DSP works better because it's a better, you know, processor. I don't know. I don't think so. But possibly. I haven't really run into, I don't have a lot of interference problems here at the shack and uh, where I'm at. Uh, underground electrical and that makes a, a world of difference. But it, it does have a lot of new features and that's that's all in the, in the better software. I'm on the 3.8.19, which is the latest one out there right now, and so it, it can do a lot of things that my other radio couldn't do. One of one of which is the um, the adjustable uh, preamp. You now I have a lot more adjustments with the 6300. I could only go on and off, and now I've got like five, six levels of, of preamp. And well, counting the attenuation, I can even do that, which that might come in handy on the lower bands having some attenuation capability. Um, let's see, of course I've got, uh, uh, the ability to bring up several things at once. This is kind of fun to, to pull up. Uh, here's 10, 12, 15, and 20 meters all at once. You can see what's going on on the band. You can also see I get some, I got some interference here on 12 meters. That's there all the time. Something in the house, probably some wall wart somewhere. When the air conditioner or the heater's running, I get a lot of interference on 10. And I have done a lot of stuff to try to alleviate that, but hadn't had any luck doing that. The other thing I like to do is uh, look at uh, WWV. And there's four, four bands of 5, 10, 15, and 20 on WWV. It's kind of fun. Nothing almost on 20, 15's good, 10's good, 5's pretty much dead. I'm hooked up to the hex beam here, so I'm sure that has something to do with it. Uh, of course, the other thing I can do that I couldn't do with the old one, let's go back to just 10 meters, is uh, you can have two two people hooked, connected at the same time to this radio so I can have it running here at home and then connect to it from my iPhone and run on a different band as long as the antenna is compatible so 20 through 6 meters you know over the uh, smart SDR on the phone for iOS smart SDR for iOS that's what it's called that's kind of fun I might uh, let one of my friends uh, remote in from home and let him play around he doesn't have HF at the house so he could play around with that when I've got it most of the time, I keep the uh, antenna grounded uh, through two different uh, coax switches <laughs> and haven't had any problem with that so far. So, uh, you know, I would have to make sure the antennas are, are ready to go and hooked up and working. Um, let's see. The other thing I, I did find out that uh, that I do have a signature series. I didn't realize it at first. All the signatures and stuff are on the bottom. And when I unpacked the thing, I didn't even look at the bottom. But I have, as I was moving things around, hooking cables up, you can't really see it, but they're there. Uh, this little display is just an external uh, con connect or an external uh, monitor for my power supply. It's not part of the radio or anything. And uh, anyway, so it is a signature series. So, so okay, bottom line. Is it a better receiver than my 6300? No, it's the same. Now, it does have the extra bandpass filtering, things like that. So if I were to take it a field day or something, you know, it would help there. If I had neighbors that were uh, HF operators that uh, were causing me some interference, yeah, that would help. It would sure help for them. But, uh, you know, I don't have anybody within miles of me. And so yeah, I don't really have that problem even with the 6300. Where uh, my old QTH, I used to have a ham who was uh, on the next block over. So he was, what, a couple hundred feet away. So it, if I was still living there, it would make a big difference. But here, it doesn't seem to make any difference. The receive on the uh, antenna, I mean, on the radios, as far as I can tell, it's the same. You know, I switched. 
uh, had them both hooked up to the same antenna at the same time, and yeah, I can't tell any difference. So, is it worth, um, well, more, what, $5,000 more? Because that's basically what this thing cost was five grand. Uh, no, no, not really. But it is future proof. You know, this is the latest and greatest hardware. And all the new software is going to work with this. Uh, the old 6000 series are going to become like the old 5000 and the 3000 series of Flex. I had a 3000 Flex and it was a great radio. But then it was obsolete. So I bought a 6300 and... And it was a great radio. I've had it 10 years and it's worked fine, no problems. Worked lots and lots and lots and lots of DX and other contacts and nets. But uh, now I'm ready for the, the next 10 years, hopefully. And I'm at the age where that may, uh, that may do me <laughs> if I'm still on the air in 10 more years. So that's the bottom line, guys. 7-3.